Friend, today I'd like to share with you a little bit of my story about the midlife crisis that I'm going through. I never thought it could be happening to me, but my story, I guess, of the great fall, <laughs> as much as the great rise, started with permaculture in 2011. And back in 2009, when I decided to abandon the city, my business was pumping. In 2007, we turned over a million dollars in one year. And then, of course, the 2008 crisis, uh, but we still were doing quite well. In fact, we we're doing so well that in 2011, I've paid off my land cash. It was over $100,000 in one year. I had seven hectares. We moved onto the land. I've decided to start building a cull earth house. The whole story ended in me bankrupting myself and running back to the city. And as you know, I've created the dome and water course there with the whole ecosystem based on biomimicry and everything I've learned from Jeff Lawton and Mike Reynolds and Cal Earth and, and Dom Gaia. So all these systems were implemented and then you know, I read the books Anastasia, got inspired, and I decided to move back to my homeland here in Russia. Whilst being here, it's been move after move after move. And it's not like I move and I just like chill out. You know, every time I move, I really think this is it. I'm here until the end. I start building. The first it was Zoya's home. And I'm like, no, 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 it's too dense. Like, I got, we got to go into nature whilst, you know, we had you know, a, a thousand square meters, one tenth of a hectare. We moved to nature, to that abandoned village where a neighbor uh, shot at me eventually. Yeah, he didn't <laughs> hit me, <laughs> so, so I'm still alive. But, uh, and please, guys, do trust me, Russia is very safe. This is just an insane neighbor, and this thing could have happened in America, <laughs> you know, <laughs> anywhere, anywhere else. Uh, the bottom line is that we left that village and already plowed so much cash into insulating the home because, you know, we wanted to stay there forever. And then we moved to an abandoned village, and there we bought another piece of land, adopted three kids for a month, because after a month, my, my partner thought that she couldn't uh, actually, you know, handle them. We had a great time. So after they left, it was another like, oh my God, you know, I got so connected with the children and obviously it was a big turmoil. And then we, I started building this Watilarium home on an abandoned village. And um, in this abandoned village where we bought the little plot of land, which we still have a hectare, lots of biting things, mosquitoes, daytime, tetra flies. It was just insane. I ran from that project and I went to Siberia, I built another home there. <laughs> I built a, a, the Hobbit vault, which I've created the course. It's edited and you, you're welcome to watch it. How I build a home for a thousand bucks on the materials. And I thought that's it. You know, when I moved to a community with 5,000 people, amazing, beautiful. They really do great stuff, but it's a sect. The guy called himself the Christ and he's not the Christ and he's sitting in jail. Childhood traumas, nobody, you know, is taken away. So people are with their issues and problems and no private property. So obviously when, when I left, I left the home there for them. Although, you know, I really wanted to try and sell it because I built a goddamn thing. <laughs> so I went back with Zoya, we connected and uh, we bought land and I built a Gothic arch, you know, whole of last year, stayed there and building full on. I overwintered there with 200 flowers, tried to keep up the temperature because it was outside minus 30 and silly me didn't insulate underneath the floor. And obviously in a cold climate, you gotta do it because it just keeps on sucking the temperature out. In the last you know months or so, I started feeling very uncomfortable. Like I'm sitting at one place and wasn't happy. You know, so first I went for a cleanse. I did a whole uh, week of fasting, um, no food at all, just on the water fast and started doing yoga again. Started finding my feet because when we meet a partner, you know, and especially, you know, some of us, well, I have fear of loneliness, of being left alone, all the stuff that I'm carrying from my childhood. But, you know, because of fear of loneliness, you, you don't want to be left alone or be abandoned by your partner. So when your partner tells you that, oh, the dance that you go to, that that looks clubby, you know, please, you know, that's not nice. So you obviously adapt and you're like, you don't want to upset your loved one. So you drop the dance and then you drop the pants because only gay people wear pants like that. And you start dropping everything, you know, and eventually become this box that uh, 
works according to what other people want for you. Five years later, I'm like so pissed off because, you know, that's not me. That's I'm living, uh, trying to be uh, good enough for other people, you know, and it's, a, it's something I carry. It's, uh, I don't know about you, but I carry this program that I just want to be good enough. I just want to be appreciated. Eventually, it gets to a point where one gets depressed and you have a choice whether you hang yourself or you do something about it and you start, you know, doing what uh, your soul came into this body to, to do. That goes to my next question of knowing thyself. And when we know thyself, life opens up and you start to fast track and you go with what usually takes 10 years for somebody you can quantum leap and get through like those black holes loopholes and poof, and manifest things pretty fast and a good sign of knowing that you're in the right path as things flow i'm not saying you feel happy all the time because this you know support and challenge are two sides of the story but you feel like uh you you're cruising on top of the wave you know and things are happening you could take one step forward and god universe pushes you another two steps forward you feel like for the last few years i take one forward and three back you know and everybody's like walking through sticky mud it's like everything is so difficult and eventually of course uh, the finances uh, let themselves know so when you're absolutely broke and you can't even move anyway you just like in 2011 when we left for, for the first time on the land i thought no that's it i'm gonna stick my head into like a ostrich that's what i did Finance is bad, dollar is bad, money is bad. I need to do permaculture because also at that time with the Jeff Lawton's permaculture course and his marketing angle and many people's marketing angles, very much fear driven. So world's coming to an end. We're having a crisis, apocalypse time. You buy from me and you're going to be happy. And that was my tactic as well. If you look at some of my videos from four years, three years back, it was like very much, uh, you know, save yourselves by my course. I stopped using that tactic, you know, buy my course if you want, otherwise don't bother, you know, really. I've put in what I did and if you resonate with my message, you will want to learn from me. If you don't, then unfortunately, a lot of the marketing out there works with fear because fear sells. It's a primary instinct that if you pluck that string, people like what can we buy just to solve that problem it's a very much structured psychological journey and it's a very planned psychology on how to get into the customer's mind it really works or maybe it worked to the point and then i stopped using it but it, it's nasty because people end up buying something and they soon realize that oh shit that's not for me and we don't want to use that at all but Unfortunately, the marketing works like that. In fact, Jeff Lawton uses also product launch formula from Jeff Walker. Because marketing is based on fear, we buy this or buy that and we are very much fear driven. Not only is the marketing based on fear, our news and myself, I fell into that from the COVID times. I started watching the news. I never used to watch the news and then COVID hit, it's like, I wanted to know what's going on so they could you know, open the borders or whatever the hell, then, you know, open up, <laughs> give us more permissions to live. And since that time, I kind of, and then before <laughs> COVID ended in one day when the thing started <laughs> next to our border, you know, I'm not going to mention the name, but you all know, Western Europe, Poland, and us, and between us as a country that's been uh, uh, weaponized a little bit. <laughs> when that, boom, one thing ends, another thing starts, and I got onto, uh, obviously, sitting, not on, I'm not talking about mainstream, I'm talking about bloggers that really speak the truth of what is happening on Frontline. Two years later, this thing is still going on. It's uh, pretty much growing. It's not, ain't, ain't stopping, and I got into depression because, I'm seeing uh, fear in my own life, fear in everything else, and I'm not following my vision. So we only have a limited amount of time in the day. We either do what we love and follow on manifesting our dreams, or we follow fear, drown in uh, social media, drown in, 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 in all stuff that's happening out there and a lot of people say but you gotta know what's going on it may affect us and it, it is true you gotta know uh, a bit of geopolitics it's 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 very good to know a bit of strategically what's happening out there but you know <laughs> the, the world ain't getting you know better the way it is it is the way it is but when we can't change that Obviously enough of us can and we do, but all we can do is change the little bit in our life. 
the project that I'm really focused on is um, creating a bio shelter that grows our food, filters air, heats itself, cools itself, just like an earthship. And of course, it's based on sacred geometry, so it mimics our, our bone and structure and universal formula. Another thing I'm really focused on is creating new types of property development where we can come together and live in a new way. Unfortunately, I don't have many drawings about that and this conversation is not about it, so I'm not gonna go into it, but it's enough on my plate to focus for the next 500 years, you know? I'll probably reincarnate and continue rolling the story out. But what I want to say to you today is you got to know yourself. What did you like doing when you were a kid? Like, what were you playing with? You know, when time stops for you, what did you do? And for me, it was in USSR, we had the type of Mercano type of those metal things with bolts and you'd connect and you make structures. I loved that. I would go to the shop at the age of seven, buy little light bulbs, uh, solder uh, 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 wires and, you know, connect them to batteries and make light bulbs, little motors spinning connecting little fans to them that my dad made for me from tin that he cut up and then it was soldered on the end and it made little fans, made little boats. I just love making stuff that moves, that glows. And of course that progressed into my decor business at first when I started at the age of 19 and that rolled for 16 years. Amazing decor, stretch fabric and that's how we made all those money that I invested into all those workshops in America and all over the world, learning biomimicry, permaculture, and biogeometry, as well as bioarchitecture, which is my passion. Knowing thyself is very important because if you don't know yourself and you don't follow your vision, you will end up following other people's vision. And if you follow other people's vision for long enough, eventually you're going to wilt away. And that's what started happening with me because when I, you know, stopped dressing the way I want to dress, when I stopped going to dances that I love, that, I, that recharged me. Adopted the permaculture vision of, you know, saving the world and making food forest gardens. Um, eventually I realized that I got depressed and it's not for me. I'm not a farmer. You gotta know, as much as the food forest sounds amazing, I'm not the guy to implement it. You might be the guy or the girl to implement it, but it's not me. I love building stuff with a team. I don't want to do it alone. I want to work with a team. But everything I plant, that's, you know, dies. It's just, you know, like, I killed already like eight fruit trees. That's the truth. You might say, oh, Losha, we thought you were greeny, green fingers. No, I'm not. Uh, water plants, yes, but again, I employed a guy who planted the water plants and plus water plants are very easy to grow because, you know, you supply the water container in your wetland, they're always rooted in water as long as you have sun and plus you've got grey water which feeds them with the right um, yummies and the food that's necessary for them to thrive. But food forest is not my thing. You know, I bought a, an amazing course from Martin Crawford many years back. Um, agroforestry.co.uk I haven't even completed the course uh, I've got three fab best books on food forest gardening I haven't completed them I looked through all the pictures obviously I got the concept but it's not me but yet when I get Ibrahim Karim's book Back to the Future of Mankind you know I swallow that in one day so that's why you gotta know yourself. Nadir Khalili from Cal Earth, which is my teacher, I've learned at Cal Earth and back in 2011. Um, and uh, Nadir Khalili said, which I never resonated, like he said, why would you wanna be in a quiet place? You go to a city where the buzz, the hum, and then that's where the creativity gets born. And I never resonated with that because, you know, no, but we want Zen, we want absolute silence, hear the bees and the birds and the wind and then I'll be happy. We lived in such a place where there was no one, no one for miles. Well, in, in one mile later, we're, we're our neighbor, but you know, we didn't resonate with them. But in terms of people that are same like-minded values, they are far away because when you're out on the land, you know, you, you're basically all alone. It's you and your partner. Whilst in the city, you've got this dance and you've got you know, last night I went dancing, it was so nice. I really unmoved and it was a sound, gong practice with chimes and they walked around. It was amazing, you know, uh, like a sound experience. I really, really enjoyed it. I came so motivated, uh, like one o'clock in the morning I arrived. You know, it was incredible. I, and that's why I'm actually recording this video. I am recharged. 
I haven't recorded a video like that for years. You know that. It hasn't been for a long time. Scroll back. There hasn't been a video for many, many years, you know, like, like that. And that's what I mean by falling under someone. Or it's also one's fault. You, you, I gave away my freedom. I didn't stand up and say, no, I'm going to be dancing. And if you don't like it, it's your problem. It's not my problem. I want to do what I want to do because of my programs of being good enough, uh, being people pleaser and not in any way upsetting my partner. You know, you drop all those things. Where was I? <laughs> Completely lost. The quietness of the land comes with its own thing because in the city, when we have the buzz, the hum, the dance, you and your inner voice, sometimes you don't hear it because, you know, it's just traffic, this, that and the other, yoga. And here, when you're out on the land and it's you and maybe your partner and your children and your homesteading, all your stuff comes up because your traumas that you haven't worked through, the voice inside your head, it's like screams. So it's much harder. You've got to be of a certain level of maturity to actually um, survive and thrive on the land. And I really, really tried. Maybe that tiny house movement is one of the choices because when it gets a bit too much, they just move. Obviously, it has its own downfall because you can't really build up anything solid. You can't grow your food forest because, you know, you're not on your land and you keep on moving all the time. So it is a choice. But all I'm trying to say, know thyself, don't get to like one choice and say, this is it. And this is what I'm gonna leave you with, a food for thought. For me, a good solution after all the experience I've had in my life, and I'm 42 now, I would say a fair amount of spending time on your land, let's say a third, you know, and obviously don't stick to exact proportions. A fair amount of traveling, getting to know country, meeting other people, going to the coast or swimming and, and just doing cool stuff and amazing, beautiful nature. Like my dream was to sit on a Vespa. I used to have a Vespa and just to travel through Altai mountains. Who knows? Maybe Azerbaijan, maybe a bit of Turkey, maybe Europe, you know, wow. You know, I'd love to visit some eco villages in Europe on a, on a, on a Vespa. You know, that'll be fantastic. I got my MacBook Pro now. Woohoo! I can design and travel as I go. And of course, uh, a third of your time is spending in the city, maybe running workshops, um, inspiring children, because everybody's in the city. So if people are here, you can make money faster in the city. Although, of course, you can do homesteading and sell potatoes and, and seedlings if that's what you are, but that's not what I am. Ideally, like a third of the time I'd love to spend in the city, 10 days a month would be lovely, lovely to come here or do a certain seminar for two, three days, fly out. Why not? We need to stop fitting into blocks and um, limitations of what others pose for us or what we have picked up as what we think is right. Feel what's right, feel what's good for you. And eventually the financial story pushed me out of where I was living, of where, of that Gothic arch I built and uh, which I overwintered in. Eventually it's like, go, go. And be, not just the financial situation, the, the depression. I got depressed and I want to change that, you know. So I came to the city and quick change of environment. I already ran a few workshops uh, for the children. It was really nice. I've sent an email and on our Telegram channel, please subscribe below and check out some photos. Yeah, I was like in my element. So find your element, find yourself, know thyself. It's the most important thing you can do. Self-develop. What's helping me is reading, cold plunges, giving me strength. Second day in a row, I'm going into cold water, I'm diving in uh, four degrees Celsius in the middle of the forest. Uh, it's amazing. I'll be doing a, a short video for you just in, in due course. Yoga every day, meditation every day. I'm going to church, I'm praying. Find what works for you and keep on growing. Because through self-development, through growth, through reading, through l watching amazing lectures, that's when you get inspiration. Dance, move. We're multidisciplinary beings. Do not get stuck into one job and just do one thing. It's a waste of a life. I wish you to be the best that you are and why you came to Earth. I'm learning about myself through really like... <laughs> But that's how we learn on the border of support and challenge happens the fastest growth. One, three.